Now, before we get started, let's talk about why you would want to be framework building while you're interpreting. Traditionally, the interpreter has worked for several weeks or until they feel like they have a final work product before they begin the mapping exercise. Now, that's really a shame because the mapping exercise can really help you build a high quality interpretation. So at Landmark, instead of framework building being something that a geomodel or specialist does, we want framework building to occur with the day-to-day -day interpretation exercise. And what that allows you to do is allows you to find errors very quickly because the map is a great way of QCing your interpretation as you go. Now the key thing about framework building is there's five key steps that we feel are best practices. The first thing in order to get a unified geologic and geophysical interpretation is you need a well-calibrated velocity model a well tie exercise in a velocity model. And in this series, we'll talk about that. But once you do, we want you to create a consistent set of seismic interpretations. Interpret faults consistently, and as you're consistently interpreting them, be able to network those. And then you can build the surfaces into that network. And what that allows you to do is really use geologic principles in order to get a better interpretation. Now, once you have a seismic interpretation and you have the depth calibration, we want you to perform the, the correlation exercise or the well correlation exercise in a time stratigraphic framework, and then we will discuss those principles later. In this exercise, we're really going to talk about the seismic interpretation while framework building. Now, there are three things the interpreter can really gain if they invest in building the framework while interpreting. One of them is a very consistent, geologically sound set of fault polygons. What traditionally happens is the interpreter used to digitize the fault polygons based on the gaps in the horizon interpretation. However, this isn't as accurate because a, a fault plane tends to curve and die out, and the surfaces are also curved that you're trying to map. And when you intersect those two, which a framework will be able to do, you get a much higher quality interpretation. So the first thing as a geophysicist, if you invest in building a framework, you're going to get very high quality fault polygons with very little effort. The second thing is an interpreter is often challenged to, to interpret at top and base of reservoirs or at many reservoir intervals that aren't well imaged by the seismic, either due to resolution or due to data quality problems. If you build a framework and you tie in the geology, as we're going to show in this exercise, you're then going to be able to build uh, very high quality consistent maps at multiple levels with very little effort after you start the initial exercise. And then the third thing is tying geologic faults that are encountered in wells with seismic faults, which don't always match, uh, is a very tedious exercise for the interpreter. And by using framework building while interpreting both faults and your well data on the seismic, you're able to then be able to build a high quality fault interpretation without any errors. Now, why would you build a framework? We want to talk about the geologic accuracy. And what happens is if you interpret at multiple levels and you tie your faults consistently across an, as a network, some faults are parents of others, some are children, and you, as you're interpreting, you're building this fault network, you can then apply geologic principles. In this picture, you can see there's a, a shallow map and there's a deep map and there's a very simple fault network. But because you've interpreted that out, there are some rules that can apply. There's some rules of thumb you can do so that as you're trying to interpret between these faults or in this area, you're able to apply these rules. And what happens is a map deep can be impacted by the interpretation shallow, and you can learn a lot more by tying the geologic rules together. So let's talk about why you would build a fault network as you interpret. In this picture, you see a fault network. All the faults have been interpreted, and at the end, you have to go back through the six or eight weeks of work you did and try to remember why you interpreted those faults. So it's very difficult to understand always exactly why you came up with that interpretation if you didn't network it when you did. Now in this example, we're networking as we're interpreting. It's a lot easier to understand uh, as you're picking your faults, you're able to see whether uh, which fault terminates against which. You make some critical decisions as you're interpreting, and we want you to immediately apply that to the fault network. So instead of interpreting 100 faults at the beginning, interpret your faults and start networking them as you go. And then that will have an impact on your further interpretation. The other key thing is any errors you make will be quickly resolved uh, as you build the fault network. So here we are, we have a fault network, and then once we've built that fault network, we can start to bring in the surface interpretation. And you can see in this example, only four 
lines on a 3D survey have been interpreted. So this could actually be a 2D seismic problem also. But because the fault network has already been built, you can see very high quality interpretation and you can actually see errors as you're interpreting the surfaces. And this is really the big payoff for the interpreter. Once that fault network is built, as they keep to interpret, you add a little more interpretation, you get a little more detail, you will immediately see the errors in your interpretation. And we want you to do this right from the very beginning. Build that fault network, and then every single surface you interpret afterwards, you'll see an example like this. And when you have your final interpretation, or you feel like the map has the kind of detail that you need to present to your management or your partners, uh, you can stop your interpretation exercise. So you really have final quality maps throughout the exercise if you invest in this. So very quickly, we're gonna show one more example on how you can do some scenarios. Once you've built the fault network, you've interpreted your surfaces out, you can see in this example, uh, before I've networked the faults, I'm not sure about how the interaction between this red and this blue fault is. I can then quickly try scenarios which show uh, different types of parent-child relationship or different types of, of intersections of these faults and you can very quickly gain the interpretation. So you have really the flexibility to uh, network the faults as you go, add the surfaces, and then use geologic rules to be understand the interpretation. So we hope you understand now, instead of waiting to the very end to let the map help you build a quality interpretation, we want you to start framework building and you'll get a much better result. Thank you.